How's it going everybody? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video we're going to be breaking down the best Shadow Pokemon to power up in Pokemon Go in 2022. Now before we get started, as always, if you guys do end up enjoying this video, please make sure to smash that like button down below, it would help me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now before we dive into the featured Pokemon of this video, I'm first going to go over some really key fundamentals in terms of how Shadow Pokemon actually work in game, as I've definitely gotten a lot of questions regarding this topic. With that being said, I also want to mention that this list is primarily going to be focused on raid slash gym attackers, and in regards to PvP attackers, I'm going to make a separate video on that in the future. Or I should say separate video videos on that for each respective league. And then finally, I do also want to mention that if you guys haven't watched my top 50 best Pokemon to power up video for 2022, I definitely recommend watching that video first because I'm going to be referencing a ton of Pokemon in regards to their meta relevance from that video. But with that being said, let's go ahead and start talking about how Shadow Pokemon actually work in Pokemon Go, starting with the cost. So it's no secret that these Shadow Pokemon are going to be much more expensive to power up in-game, both in Stardust and Candy Required. So during last year's video, I received a ton of comments really concerned about this. Like, people were saying like, oh, I don't have enough Stardust to power up these Pokemon. Like, why should I be focusing on Shadow Pokemon more than regular Pokemon? So I definitely took this into consideration for this year's video, and I factored it into my analysis. So for the future Pokemon that we're going to be talking about, I will provide you guys with recommendations in terms of how much you need to actually power up that Pokemon, for it to be worth it without actually blowing through all of your Stardust. And interestingly enough, some of the Pokemon that we're going to be talking about in today's video at level 30 in their Shadow Forms are going to be more powerful than some of the level 40 Pokemon that we talked about in the other video. So definitely a lot of considerations here, but don't worry, I'm going to break everything down in detail as we continue to go through each individual Pokemon. And then once again, if you guys are curious in terms of how Pokemon levels work, please make sure to reference back to the top 50 best Pokemon video as I provide an explanation in there. Now with that being said, I'm sure some of you are wondering, well then how much Stardust does it cost to actually get these Shadow Pokemon up to level 30 compared to their counterparts. So we're going to use the baseline of level 20, which is pretty much the standard that you would actually get a Pokemon at from a raid. So level 20 to level 30 would normally cost 75,000 Stardust and 66 Candy non-Shadow. For a Shadow Pokemon, this would cost you 136,000 Stardust and 152 Candy. So that's going to be 61,000 Stardust more. Now with that being said, if you actually power up a normal Pokemon from level 20 to level 35, it's about 137,000 Stardust. So that's basically the same, and so we're going to use that equivalent, right? So a level 35 normal Pokemon is going to be the same cost as a level 30 Shadow Pokemon. So make sure to keep that in mind as we continue to go through this video, as I'm definitely going to reference it quite a bit. But now let's go and talk about the Shadow Boost and how that actually works. So basically the way that the Shadow Boost works is that it's going to be plus 20% in attack, but also a reduction by 20% in defense. That's essentially the trade-off that you get from a much higher attack stat. So these are definitely strong considerations because your Shadow Pokemon are probably going to be more glassy, but they're also going to dish out so much more damage. This is why I really wanted to use the DPS times TDO measurement in terms of power potential for this video, because I feel like it better represents the overall power dynamic for these Pokemon, especially because their defense is going to be reduced significantly. Like, does their attack actually make up that much for it? And you'll see that it definitely does. The next thing that we're going to talk about is going to be the frustration move that all Shadow Pokemon are going to have initially. This is going to be a charge move. And and this move can only be TM'd during certain events, it's mainly just Team Rocket events, we just recently had one too. So what I recommend doing, and we get these maybe like every 3-4 to four months, sometimes a little bit sooner, so I recommend having a search tag with all the Pokemon that you ultimately want to TM. You're gonna have to use a charge TM, and trust me when I say this, these charge TMs are gonna go through fast. There are so many Shadow Pokemon out there that you probably want to TM away, frustration, but you know, getting charge TMs might be a little bit difficult. So how can you actually get more charge TMs in game. So I'm going to go over two methods that I find to be the best in terms of my free to play play style. The first one is going to be 3 star raids and mega raids. So these are going to reward you with a guaranteed charge TM every single time you complete one. And the second way is going to be from Go Battle League, the win to reward pool. Uh, you have a chance at getting a charge TM, and this is one of the best ways that I farm charge TMs in game. So either way works, guys. Uh, whatever you want to do 3 star raids, mega raids, or Go Battle League, uh, take your pick. Now let's go over a question that I get asked so often Should I power up a Shadow Pokemon? with bad IVs. So first of all, you can't trade Shadow Pokemon, so what you get is what you get. This means that getting high IVs on a Pokemon is going to be quite a grind. So keeping that in mind, certain Shadow Pokemon are also going to be much rarer than others. For example, Dratini is extremely rare. So your options may be limited at times. So what's important first should be the base stats of a Pokemon, 
then the potential shadow boost, and then finally the IV spread. The best example that I have for this is definitely looking at Mewtwo. So Mewtwo compared to the other psychic type Pokemon are just terrible, right? Everything else is terrible compared to Mewtwo. But why is that? Is it because of the IV spread? No, it's because of Mewtwo's base stats. Mewtwo's base stats are incredible, and then we look at the potential shadow boost, which in this case we'll just say that we don't have it, and then we finally look at the IV spread. But the most important thing is going to be the base stats. Like if we compare 100% IV Alakazam to a 0% IV Mewtwo, Mewtwo is going to be much better, not because of the IV spread, but because of its base stats. Now going back to the main question at hand here, due to the 20% shadow boost that Pokemon get, the IVs most of the time are quite irrelevant when comparing them to their non-shadow variants. Once again guys, base stats, potential shadow boost, and then IVs. Now with that being said, I'm not telling you guys to just power up anything. I would still try and get the best IV spread that you can possibly get, but understand that getting anything in the 90% range is going to be extremely rare. I mean like really, really rare. So I feel like anything between 70% to 80% would be, you know, pretty solid. Um, obviously 90% would be amazing, but uh, considering how expensive these Pokemon are to get, the grind time that you go through to get a decent IV spread on some of these should also help you accumulate the Stardust that you're going to need to actually power them up. So in that regards, I feel like it's balanced pretty well. Now finally, one of the last things I want to talk about real quick are going to be the Shadow Legendary Pokemon, which actually work a little bit different compared to the normal Shadow Pokemon that you get from Team Go Rocket Grunts. So for Shadow Legendary Pokemon, you're going to need to have a Super Rocket Radar to battle Giovanni. You can get these from various special research quests, which I've listed on screen right now. So you also have to complete the current one before you can unlock the next one. So the normal way that it works is that one quest corresponds to one Shadow Legendary Pokemon. This is a standard rule. But which Shadow Legendary Pokemon is going to depend on what is currently in rotation. I know that may sound kind of confusing, so let me break this down in an example. If I got a Super Rocket Radar from the Shadow Entei quest, but I decided not to use it until Shadow Suicune came into rotation, I would then get Shadow Suicune for beating Giovanni and not Entei, despite completing the Entei questline. So step 5 out of 6 normally requires me to beat Giovanni right before unlocking the next Suicune questline. Now let's say for example I decide to keep the Super Rocket Radar from the Shadow Entei questline because I don't really want Suicune, right? I want to wait for the next Shadow Legendary and see what that one is going to be. I can still use the Super Rocket Radar from the Shadow Entei questline, but I'm going to miss my chance to get Shadow Suicune. Also, I'm not going to be able to do the Shadow Suicune questline anymore, because whatever questline is after Shadow Suicune, that's going to be the one that I get after completing the Entei questline. So each of these radars availability will vary from scenario to scenario. Again, I know this sounds super confusing, but I currently have four Super Rocket Radars stacked in my inventory, and I've been juggling them from a ton of different things like the timed research, and then I currently have one from the Misunderstood Mischief quest for Lugia, and then also from the Ho-Oh Special Research quest. So the Lugia radar worked a little bit differently than normal, which is why this was an exception to the rule. Again, I know it sounds super complicated, so just feel free to ask me questions in the comments section down below and I can provide additional clarification. And then finally, just to reiterate this once again, I will be using the DPS times TDO metric to measure power potential in this video. And I know we just went through a ton of information, so if you guys have any questions, once again, just let me know in the comments section down below. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the Pokemon. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the fire type Pokemon here. And once again, if you guys haven't watched my top 50 best Pokemon to power up video in 2022, I really recommend watching that one first because I'm going to be referencing a ton of Pokemon from that video in comparison to these shadow Pokemon and their meta relevance. So previously we talked about Mega Charizard Y with Fire Spin and Blast Spin in the last video, and that Pokemon is miles away from everything else. That is always going to be your MVP, but you can only have one Mega. So what about the other Pokemon? So the next best in line would be Reshiram, right? Well, Shadow Entei actually ranks a little bit better than Reshiram. Not by much, maybe like 100 points. Uh, same moveset, Fire Fang, Overheat for both of them. And uh, this Pokemon is really solid. You know, even looking at it at level 30, this Pokemon beats out a lot of the level 40 options like Darmanitan, Entei in its regular form, non-shadow, and then Moltres. A uh, level 30 Shadow Entei will be much better than a level 40 version of those three Pokemon I just mentioned. So Shadow Entei is definitely a strong pick. If you guys have one, I would definitely recommend investing into it. Just level 30 should be fine. I mean, again, you're going to get so much value out of it just at level 30. If you decide to go further with it, man, that is a beast. But again, Reshiram does rank pretty well um, on top of that too. So whether you have Reshiram, Shadow Entei, both are going to perform optimally around the same area. Now following that, the next Shadow Pokemon is going to be Shadow Moltres, which is actually a little bit below low Reshiram by like 20 points. It's like they're practically the same guys. Now in terms of cost wise, Reshiram is going to make more sense here because you can get the lucky version for Reshiram and you're basically getting the same power potential. But if you're like me and you like to have different Pokemon in your lineup, then Shadow Moltres might be a good consideration as well. Fire Spin and Overheat is going to be the ideal move set. And once again, at level 
30, this Pokemon beats out its regular counterpart, Entei and Armanitan. Now the third Pokemon that we're going to talk about is going to be Shadow Charizard with Fire Spin and Blast Burn. Blast Burn is a Legacy Calm Day move set, so you will have to use an Elite Tam on it. You're probably wondering why am I bringing this Pokemon up, right? Because it can't be better than Shadow Moltres or Shadow Entei. So Shadow Charizard can also be used for the Ultra League. So even if you go for like a really low attack spread, right? So like zero attack, 15 um, HP and 15 defense, this Pokemon is gonna land somewhere around like the level 34, level 35 range, which at that point is actually gonna be more powerful than a level 40 Darmanitan, Entei and Moltres. It's actually gonna land around 24, 21 in terms of its overall DPS times TDO points. Whereas a Darmanitan would be around 20 2200 at level 40. So I really wanted to include this Pokemon on this list because it can be used as a dual functionality Pokemon for both PvP and the Ultra League as well as a raid slash gym attacker. I know I said I wasn't going to dive into PvP attackers too much in this video, but for dual functionality I feel like that's a fair take. So again, Shadow Charizard for the Ultra League around like level 34 or level 35 below that 2500 uh, CP limit is also going to function as a really good attacker for the raid slash gym meta. Now finally, the last fire type Pokemon I want to go over was recently added into the game and that's going to be Shadow type Flow with Incinerate and Blast Burn. Once again, Blast Burn, an exclusive Calm Day moveset. But with the Johto Tour event coming up soon, you can actually evolve this Pokemon to get Blast Burn if you ended up TM in frustration away on your Cyndaquils. So hopefully some of you guys did do that. Uh, this Pokemon pretty much has the same scenario as Shadow Charizard. Uh, below the 2500 CP limit, you could use it for the Ultra League. And then again, you'll get dual functionality for it in the Raid slash Gen meta. It's not going to be like super good, but it'll be around the same range as a level 40 Darmanitan or a level 40 the Entei, which I would say is pretty good for a level 35 Typhlosion in a shadow form. So again, another really solid contender right there. Uh, dual functionality for both Typhlosion and Charizard. Moltres and Entei are basically at the same levels of Reshiram. And yeah, that's basically going to do it for the fire type attackers. Let's move on over to the grass types next. So taking a look at our grass types, once again, Mega Venusaur is going to be the top contender in this category. Uh, followed by that is going to be Zerud, and then we're going to have our shadow Pokemon. So we're going to talk about the first one being Shadow Tangrowth with Vine Whip and Power Whip. The other two Shadow Pokemon are both going to require a Calm Day moveset, Frenzy Plant, so you're going to have to use an Elite TM. So in terms of the one that I recommend the most, Shadow Tangrowth is going to be it. So the really cool thing about all three of the Shadow Pokemon though, Shadow Tangrowth, Torterra, and Venusaur, is that at level 30, all three of these Pokemon are going to be more powerful than a level 40 Roserade. So getting these uh, three Shadow Pokemon up to level 30 is basically all that you need. Of course, you can go further if you want to, but I mean, that's a pretty sweet deal right there. So in terms of the grass type Pokemon, these three Shadows, and especially Shadow Tangrowth because you don't need to use an Elite Charge TM, I would really recommend going for it. So once again, the grass types definitely have some really strong relevance in their Shadow forms, but now let's go and take a look at the water type Pokemon. And do they also have some of the same relevance, right? So Mega Blastoise is going to be the best water type Pokemon in the game, followed by Mega Gyarados. And then after that, we are going to have Shadow Swampert with Water Gun and Hydro Cannon. Once again, Hydro Cannon being an exclusive Calm Day moveset. Now, Shadow Swampert, guys. Oh my god, this Pokemon is phenomenal. So basically, we're going to be comparing this to Kyogre, which would be the best water type Pokemon in the non-shadow category, which lands somewhere around the 2700s in terms of DPS times TDO points. Well, Shadow Swampert lands at 3379 at level 40. At level 35, it's 2748. So a level 35 Shadow Swampert is going to be more powerful than a level 40 Kyogre. And uh, when we compare it at level 30, which is around 2197, this Pokemon is going to be more powerful than pretty much everything else in the meta at level 40. Uh, Non-Shadow, I should say. So yeah, Kyogre is pretty much the only thing that holds up, um, but comparatively, like Shadow Swampert is a beast. And Shadow Swampert has relevance like uh, Charizard and Typhlosion in the Ultra League. So if you power one up for the Ultra League, you're going to have dual functionality once again with this Pokemon. Of course, you would be using Mudshot instead of Water Gun, but it's still going to be incredibly good in the Raid Slash Gen meta. Now, the next Pokemon that we're going to talk about is going to be Shadow for Alligator with Water Gun and Hydro Cannon. Both of these movesets are actually exclusives, so you're actually going to need two Elite TMs to get this Pokemon with the right moveset. Um, so again, it's totally up to you. If you end up getting like a 100% IV Shadow Totodile, then I would probably do this, maybe even like a 90% just to have it. But uh, other than that, I wouldn't really recommend going for Shadow for Alligator, but let me go over its meta relevance, right? So it lands a little bit better than Kyogre, right? It's about maybe 200 points higher than Kyogre, give or take. And then at level 30, it definitely ranks above um, all the other water types for the most part. 
So again, a level 30 Shadow for Alligator is going to be the go-to, but I would probably go with the Shadow Swampert if you can, uh, because you only have to use one Elite Charge TM, opposed to having to use an Elite Fast TM plus an Elite Charge TM for Shadow for Alligator. Now on top of these two Pokemon, I also ran the numbers for Shadow Gyarados, but it really just didn't make the cut, so I'm not going to include it on this list. Now when it comes down to the Electric type attackers, man, do we have some amazing picks here. Okay, I'm really excited about this, guys. So Shadow Raikou is going to be the best electric type attacker in the game, even more so than Mega Manectric. Yeah, Shadow Raikou with Thundershock and Wild Charge is going to be better than a Mega Pokemon. Now keep in mind Mega Manectric isn't that much worse compared to Shadow Raikou. I think Shadow Raikou is only up by maybe like 120 points, uh, give or take. So I mean, that's still pretty good. But having a combination of the two like Shadow Raikou plus Mega Manectric, oh my god, you're going to be so solid. And again, having this Pokemon at level 30 is going to be phenomenal compared to some of your other options. Like, it beats out Raikou, Zapdos, and Electivire at level 30 uh, compared to their level 40 versions. So that's kind of incredible. Now following that, we are going to have Shadow Electivire with Thundershock and Wild Charge about 400 points below Mega Manectric. And again, this Pokemon, really, really solid. You really can't complain too much. Taking a look at Shadow Electivire in level 30 form, it is actually going to be on par with regular Raikou at level 40. So keep that in mind. If you get a Shadow Shadow Electivire with Thundershock and Wild Charge at level 30, you basically have a Raikou right there. That's incredible. Like, that is awesome. That's actually going to be less Stardust too to get to level 30 on the uh, Shadow Electivire. Now, Shadow Zapdos is going to be the next option here um, with Thundershock, which is an exclusive Raid Day moveset. So that is going to be an Elite Fast TM right there. And Thunderbolt. This one is slightly worse than uh, Shadow Electivire by like 20 points. So if I had to pick one, I would just go with Shadow Electivire because you don't have to use an Elite Fast TM. And again, you know, basically on par with uh, level 40 Raikou right there at level 30. So those two options, really, really solid. And then finally, the last Pokemon that I'm going to talk about here is going to be a Shadow Magnezone which is a little bit worse than a Zekrom. So if I had to pick between the two, I would definitely go with a Zekrom over a Shadow Magnezone just because of the cost, especially because you can get it in a Lucky version form. Um, but in terms of everything else, like Shadow Raikou, Shadow Electivire, and Shadow Zapdos, those are definitely going to be strong considerations for what you want to have in the meta. Next up, we do have Poison-type Pokemon, but honestly, I'm just going to skip past this one because none of them really make the cut. Roserade is still going to be the best option in this category, non-Shadow. So yeah, that's, that's basically all I have to say about that. Now, flying types, though, that's a different story. So we did talk about this Pokemon earlier. Shadow Moltres is going to be the number one flying type attacker in the game with Wing Attack and the legacy move Sky Attack. So Sky Attack was a raid exclusive move set, so you will have to use an Elite Charge TM to get this. But let me just tell you this right now, guys. A level 30 Shadow Moltres is going to be better than a level 40 Moltres with Wing Attack and Sky Attack. Shadow Moltres DPS times TDO points is going to be 4,500 at level 40. Regular Moltres is going to be 2,500 points. We're talking about a 2,000 point difference here. I seriously cannot recommend this enough. For the flying type category, Shadow Moltres with this moveset is phenomenal. Like it beats out literally everything, including a freaking Mega Pidgeot, man. That's crazy. Next up, we're going to talk about Shadow Ho-Oh, and I just want to say this right now. This is one of the rarest Pokemon to get in-game with this moveset, and it's not like super meta-breaking either, so like I wouldn't worry about it too much, but it is ranked pretty well. So you need the Hidden Power for flying, and for those of you who don't know how Hidden Power works, it's specific to that Pokemon. So like one Ho-Oh that you catch might have Dragon Hidden Power, the other Ho-Oh might have Flying Hidden Power, and there's so many different typings out there. You have no idea what you're going to get. And Shadow ho -Oh, nonetheless, like getting Hidden Power for flying, if you have that, like if you actually have that, comment down below because I'm so curious. But this Pokemon ranks pretty well. Um, at level 30, I would definitely recommend investing into it. It does beat out some of the other options that you have on this list. Um, but again, like it's so rare to get. With that being said though, let's talk about a more accessible option now. Shadow Honchkrow with Peck and Sky Attack. So at level 30, this Pokemon actually beats out Ho-Oh, Rayquaza, Yveltal, and basically everything else at level 40. Well, I take that back. Regular Ho-Oh with Hidden Power uh, flying would beat it by like a little bit, by like 50 points, but I'm not even going to include that. Guys, Shadow Honchkrow at level 30 beats Rayquaza with Air Slash and Hurricane, Yveltal with Gust and Hurricane. So yeah, this is like the move. Without a doubt, Shadow Honchkrow is going to be the go-to at level 30 
compared to a level 40 Rayquaza, a level 40 Yveltal. That's crazy, right? So really my top two recommendations if I don't include Shadow Ho would be Shadow Moltres and Shadow Honchkrow in terms of overall meta relevance. And again, guys, like there's not too many options in the flying type category. Unfortunately, we don't have any ghost type Pokemon that made the category, so we're just gonna skip straight over that and go to dark types next. So Shadow Tyranitar definitely gonna be my best recommendation here. And really at the end of the day, it is not the best recommendation, right? Because you still have Mega Houndoom and Mega Gyarados. Those two are gonna be your top picks in terms of what's gonna be best in this meta. Um, of course, you can only have one Mega though, so yeah, Shadow Tyranitar would be next in line right there. It's about uh, 400 points or about 450 points lower than Mega Gyarados, so still the top of its category uh, if you don't include Megas. And even at level 30, like this Pokemon is still pretty solid. It's not going to be as good as some of the other level 40 options, like Darkrai for example, but it's definitely a decent option at level 30. Same could be said for Shadow Weavile with Snarl and Foul Play. So I feel like the key takeaway here is that Shadow Tyranitar and Shadow Weavile in their level 30 forms are going to beat out these Pokemon in their level 40 forms non-Shadow. Hydragon, Tyranitar, and Weavile. Um, comparatively, Darkrai and Yveltal are still going to be better in their level 40 forms, but like Yveltal is barely above uh, Shadow Tyranitar, maybe like 100 points. And then Darkrai is going to be pretty good, it's like 2200 compared to the 1748 that is Shadow Tyranitar at level 30, but I feel like the best comparison here would be Shadow Tyranitar at level 35 and then Darkrai at level 40. They're pretty much around the same, so if you want another Darkrai, you could go Shadow Tyranitar at level 35, or if you feel like Darkrai is just the better investment, then uh, you could go with that option as well. But both of these Pokemon you can't actually trade, so I feel like it's just really whatever you want the most. And I feel like there's no bad option here. Either Darkrai or Shadow Tyranitar at level 35 would be optimal. Now when it comes down to the Psychic type category, uh, Shadow Mewtwo is going to reign supreme here by like so much. But I do want to compare it to the regular Mewtwo, right? Because this is basically your best recommendation for this uh, category. So regular Mewtwo with Confusion and Psy Strike, the uh, signature move on Mewtwo and also a legacy move set now, is going to be around 6,000 DPS times TDO points. Shadow Mewtwo at level 40 with the same move set is going to be around 11,000 points. So we're talking about a 5,000 point difference. And a really key takeaway here is that a level 30 Shadow Mewtwo is going to be around 7,000 points. So a level 30 Shadow Mewtwo is still going to be around a thousand points higher than a level 40 Mewtwo with the same moveset. Yeah, I mean, if that is insane that Shadow Mewtwo is one of the best Pokemon in this game, I don't know what will. So if you have Shadow Mewtwo, even if you have the worst IV spread possible, like even if you literally got a 0% IV Shadow Mewtwo, this thing is that good. Like, it is so good. Even as a generalist attacker, Shadow Mewtwo is the way to go. So definitely F in chat if you guys purified your Shadow Mewtwo, because that really sucks. And I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this, guys. This is one of the best Pokemon to power up in the game if you have it. All right, moving on over to our next category, we're going to have bug types next. So we have two Pokemon here that I want to talk about. They're going to be Shadow Pinsor and Shadow Scizor. So these Pokemon, respectively, in their level 30 versions are actually going to be more powerful than their level 40 versions. So I feel like that speaks volumes right there. Um, the only Pokemon that really is ranked a little bit better would be Genesect with Fairy Cutter and X-Scissor. And then, sorry, for the movesets on Shadow Pinsor, Bug Bite, X-Scissor, uh, Shadow Scizor, Fairy Cutter, and X-Scissor. And then, of course, you also have Mega Beedrill as well with uh, Bug Bite and X-Scissor. But in terms of overall meta relevance here, I wouldn't recommend focusing in on these Pokemon too much. But if you really want to have a good Bug type attacker, um, I know some of you guys might have a shiny Shadow Scissor out there from the Team Go Rocket leaders. If you have that, I mean, powering that thing up to level 30, that's going to be a really solid bug type attack here. And then I guess also Shadow Pinsir too, right? From uh, Jesse and James when they were in Rocket Balloons. You could also have the Shiny Shadow for that too. That's actually really cool. Both of these Pokemon are going to be Shiny Shadow forms potentially, and they actually have meta relevance in the bug type category. Next up, we have our fighting type category, which I'm super excited to talk about. So Shadow Machamp and Shadow Hariyama are going to be your top picks here. Mainly just Shadow Machamp though with Counter and Dynamic Punch. Same moveset for Hariyama. Uh, Shadow Machamp at level 30 is going to be better by like 300 points compared to its regular counterpart at level 40. That kind of speaks volumes, doesn't it? So when it comes down to it, Shadow Machamp is easily going to be one of the best investments you can make by far. Um, you know, just even going to level 30 is more than enough. Level 35 would just be like icing on the cake there. And of course, level 40, dude, if you have like six level 40 Shadow Machamps, you're golden. Like, you're good. The only Pokemon that I can think that's going to top that in the future would probably be Mega Lucario. So yeah, Shadow Machamp is probably going to be the MVP in terms of this category for a very long time. Taking a look at the Rock type category next, we only have one Pokemon that like kind of made this list and I feel like it's debatable too. It's going to be Shadow Tyranitar once again with Smackdown and Stone Edge. Uh, Smackdown is going to be an exclusive Calm Day moveset. 
So this Pokemon at level 30 isn't going to be anything to write home about. At level 40, it is going to beat out Rhyperior with Smackdown and Rock Record, but only by like 300 points. So considering the cost that it would take to get Shadow Tyranitar to level 40, I really wouldn't recommend it over a Rhyperior with Rock Wrecker, which you can get as a lucky version and save a ton of Stardust. So when it comes down to it, yeah, Shadow Tyranitar is technically better, but would I invest into it? Probably not, especially because you also have to use an Elite Fast TM. Like, it just doesn't seem worth it. When it comes down to the ground type category, we don't have anything in here just yet. I feel like when we get a Shadow Excadrill, that is definitely going to be the top recommendation, or even Shadow Garchomp, but as of right now, the only thing in here is Shadow Mamoswine, which just doesn't make the cut. Um, Ice type attackers though for Shadow Mamoswine, that is a different story. So Shadow Mamoswine, Powder Snow, and Avalanche, dude, this thing is a monster in the Ice type category. So at level 30, Shadow Mamoswine is going to beat out Galarian Darmanitan, which is normally the number one attacker in this list, by like 150 points. You know, comparatively at level 40, dude, um, it's up by like 1500 points in comparison to Galarian Darmanitan, maybe like 1400 points actually. So when it comes down to it, building a team of six Shadow Mamoswine at level 30 is going to be all you need for the Ice-type category. And again, guys, we're talking about Shadow Mamoswine at level 30 beating out level 40 Galarian Darmanitan, regular Mamoswine, Mega Obama Snow, Glaceon, and Weavile. Yeah, it's it's that good. The next best option would be Shadow Weavile uh, with Ice Shard and Avalanche. This Pokemon is still pretty good if you already built one because you can get the uh, Shadow Shiny, I believe, or you could have got the Shadow Shiny in the past. I would definitely consider investing into this one if you want to just have that flex, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, like when it really comes down to it, Shadow Mamoswine is the GOAT. Following our Ice-type attackers, next up we're going to talk about our Steel-type attackers, and uh, very similar to how the Psychic-type category worked, Metagross, once again, going to be the only MVP you need to focus on, the Shadow Metagross, oh boy. Alright, so let's compare this to the regular one, um, once again, the moveset is going to be Bullet Punch and Meteor Mash, Meteor Mash is going to be an exclusive Calm Day moveset, so you will have to use an Elite TM, but I would really recommend it for the Shadow one if you end up getting a good IV spread. So comparatively, Metagross with Meteor Mash at level 40 non-Shadow is going to be around 36 100 points. Shadow Metagross is basically double that, not quite double, but it's going to be around 6400 points at level 40. And then at level 30, it's going to be 4100 points. So it's actually 500 points higher at level 30, guys. A level 30 Shadow Metagross better than a level 40 Metagross. Yep. It's that good. It is that good, guys. Again, you're going to have to use those Elite Charge TMs or maybe just wait until you get an event uh, which allows you to TM Metagross to get Meteor Mash. We don't have those too often, by the way. But if it does come around, then, you know, this is going to be the move. Even if you have, like, the worst IVs possible, Shadow Metagross with Meteor Mash, holy cow, that is going to be a monster. Shadow Metagross is probably going to be goaded for the foreseeable future. I don't see any Pokemon actually beating this Pokemon out in the Steel-type category, so this is kind of future-proof, which is really nice. We only have two more categories left to talk about. The next one is going to be fairy types. So we have Shadow Gardevoir, which is going to be the MVP here. Shadow Gardevoir with Charm and Dazzling Gleam is basically going to beat out every other option that you have on this list at level 40. So Togekiss, Gardevoir, Sylveon, Granbull, none of them even come close to Shadow Gardevoir at level 30. Like Togekiss is probably the closest you're going to get at 1394. But uh, again, guys, that's like 100 points less than Shadow Gardevoir at level 30, and it's going to cost you more Stardust. So it's actually really interesting to compare these because I think the level 30 comparison really just brings to light like how much you actually save in Stardust by actually investing into some of these Shadow Pokemon comparatively to their level 40 counterparts. Your next best option after that is going to be Shadow Granbull, which at level 40 it is going to beat out the competition, but at level 30 it doesn't come close to the level 40s on non-Shadow. And then like at level 35, it's still going to be a bit lower than Togekiss and Gardevoir at level 40 in their non-Shadow. So would I recommend Shadow Granbull? Honestly, no. Like again, this one of those Pokemon where you can build it for the Ultra that can get dual functionality, but at the end of the day, like, would I build multiple of them? No, just one for the Ultra League should be fine, and then just get the dual functionality, and then Shadow Gardevoir is basically going to be your go-to. Team of Six of Shadow Gardevoir would probably be the best option that you guys have for the foreseeable future, at least until Shadow Togekiss comes into the game, which I don't know if that's ever going to happen, like, maybe someday, right? But um, as of right now, Shadow Gardevoir, MVP, Charm and Dazzling Gleam, literally cannot complain. Now, finally, for the Dragon-type category, I feel like we've barely touched on this, mainly because we have so many potential options for the future, but as of right now, you only have two main contenders in this category, Shadow Salamence and Shadow Dragonite. So let's go ahead and talk about Shadow Salamence first with Dragon Tail and Outrage. Outrage is going to be an exclusive Calm Day moveset. So comparing this Pokemon at level 30 to its counterparts at level 40 like Rayquaza, Palkia, regular Salamence, Garchomp, Zekrom, 
it is better by like 200 points. Yeah, at level 30, once again, this Pokemon just is phenomenal. So this is going to be the most powerful dragon type attacker in the game currently until we get some of the other shadow legendaries added into the game. Don't know when that's going to happen. I mean, I think when Shadow Rayquaza comes into the game, it's like game over for everything else. But as of right now, Shadow Salamence seems to be the move, especially because you can actually get Shiny Shadow Bagon currently from the rotation. So I don't know. That's pretty incentivizing if you ask me. And even with the worst IVs, guys, like powering that thing up is going to be an amazing flex. Uh, next up again, we have Shadow Dragonite, Dragon Tail, and Outrage. Uh, no exclusive movesets right there. This Pokemon ranks around 3,300 points, so this is going to be closer to around where Salamence is at level 40. Same thing with Palkia. Uh, Rayquaza is still going to beat it out, but uh, in terms of overall meta relevance, can't complain too much. And again, this is at level 30. If you get these guys to like level 40, holy crap. Like, they're up by like 2,000 points compared to the other level 40s non-Shadow. You do have the potential option, right, to go with uh, Shadow Dragonite for both dual functionality in the Ultra League as well as a Raid slash Gym Attacker. That would be my best recommendation in terms of that Pokemon, Shadow Salamence. I mean 100% Raid Attacker, that thing is a monster. And so with that being said, that's going to be all the Pokemon that I wanted to talk about in this video. But in case you guys are curious for more knowledge, I'm going to leave these videos right here. I definitely recommend checking them out. But before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all real soon in the next one.